And we are back on Build Face TV. I'm your host, Mr. Ben. And on today's episode, I want to talk about something other than my favorite game versus my other current favorite game, Dice Throne. So for people who are tuned into the Dice Throne community, over the past several weeks, we have been treated to a series of puzzles. We were told that if you solve these puzzles, it would lead to a reveal the actual reveal isn't going to happen until October 25th, but here over the last couple days we had an announcement of an announcement that has proven to be very electrifying. Almost controversial, some might say. So today I want to take a few minutes to talk about Dice Throne. This is not going to be a how to play, this is not going to be a review of the game, but I, I am going to touch on some particulars about things that I like about the game, as well as the big news. But before we get to the big news, if you have not solved the Dice Throne puzzles, the 17 puzzles that were released over the last couple weeks, and you still want to solve the 17 puzzles, stop right here. Don't watch any further because I'm going to talk about the puzzles for a minute or two. And towards the end of the video, I will be talking about my reaction to the announcement that the puzzles revealed. So before I go any further, let's talk about the puzzles. So the first puzzle that was revealed was this one. It was actually a digital jigsaw puzzle that you had to assemble to make the word pup. This is clearly a reference to the barbarian. And as we go on, each one of these puzzles is a reference to one of the heroes that already exists within the game. Some of these I solved, some of these I didn't. I now have all the answers for them. Uh, this was Exploding Arrow, which is a reference to the Moon Elf. This is clearly a reference to the Monk. The answer was Tempest. This is probably the easiest one of them all, which is Tithe. Uh, this uh, puzzle number five, you can kind of faintly see that it says combustion down there at the bottom. The, some of the, it, I didn't put all the solved ones in here, but like here again, this originally didn't have this down below part pasted onto the top, but that spells mischief. Uh, I, I actually did like a lasso of each of those pieces to paste it in, which was probably unnecessary. My wife looked at it and without even pasting it in was like, oh, that says mischief. <laughs> Uh, Spirit, which is a reference to the Treant. Shadewalk, which is a reference to the Ninja. Charlie, I believe the Gunslinger's full name is Charlotte, so Charlie must be her uh, nickname or whatever. Uh, Honor. Uh, Flank, you can see the, the Morse code up here. Bond between Naira. Powder Keg is a reference to the Pirate. Scrap is a, and you can even see the Artificer there. Third. I'm not sure I understand the angel one. The seraph one was not one that I solved myself. Gaze, this has the mesmerized token from the vampire lord here. And then the 17th puzzle is keep rolling sixes. Once you solve the 17th puzzle and see this keep rolling, says this right here, this link was the final puzzle. And that's what brought us to here. I'm gonna just hit play on this video. It's not very long. And this is the big reveal. So, I showed that to my son, and his mind melted and poured out of his ears. He was, th oh, geez, let's get away from YouTube recommendations. Uh, my son got extremely excited about the prospect of this, as did I. My current favorite game that I play is a PvP game called Versus, where you use Marvel characters and you fight against other characters. Versus also has Aliens, Buffy... Uh, X-Files, Predator, all these different IPs that have been brought together, and even the MCU is treated almost as a separate IP from Marvel Comics. All of these separate IPs have been brought together and live in cohesively in a game where you can have all these different power fantasies, and it's a lot of fun. I will say, with Buffy in particular, when it was revealed that Buffy was going to be brought into my Marvel Universe, I felt like it wasn't going to fit well. And then later, I kind of had the same feeling with X-Files. Like, these FBI agents are going to be shooting bullets at Thor. Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, what are you talking about? However, the game designers were able to design the mechanics in such a way that whether you're playing with Mulder and Scully or you're playing with Captain Marvel and Sister Grimm, the game still works and the mechanics are still solid. So that's the first thing I want to put out there. Dice Throne as a game is one of the best game systems I've encountered. 
generally I have a lot of trash to talk about dice. I'm not the biggest fan of rolling dice. I don't have enough control over the randomness. It makes me angry in a way that the randomness of cards being shuffled in my deck doesn't make me angry. There are very few games that I've encountered that involve rolling dice that I like a lot or like over the long term. Dice Throne has won me over in such a major way. There's cards in the game, and that gives you some element of control. And the dice, I, it just doesn't hit the way Hero Clicks dice rolls. Like a fail in Dice Throne doesn't feel as bad as the way a fail in Hero Clicks felt. So I've been completely swept up by this game. Now, once this news was announced, there were a lot of people who had very negative things to say. And some of those criticisms, I think, are valid. There are people that are suffering from Marvel fatigue. They're tired of Marvel everything everywhere. And people are entitled to feel however they feel. Speaking for myself, as someone who grew up in the 80s and 90s before Marvel and comics and all this stuff was mainstream cool culture, uh, I kind of feel like... <laughs> I was going to say shut up, but that's a little bit rude. That Everybody's entitled to have their feelings, but as somebody who's been a lifelong fan of nerd culture and lived through a period of American history where nerd culture was not the multi-billion dollar juggernaut that everybody loves, I think the idea that we're seeing Marvel characters in all these different environments is really freaking cool. Yes, I get that once you're the biggest thing, there's a certain number of people that just don't like the thing that's the biggest thing. Oh, man, Nirvana's a really popular band, therefore I don't like Nirvana. Marvel's a really popular entertainment franchise, therefore I don't like Marvel. There is some of that. And, you know, the contrarians are going to be contrary. And that's fine. Again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But at the core of this, I think if you're a fan of head-to-head -head battling games and you're a fan of Marvel... The Marvel Dice Throne marriage is going to give you a lot of things to love. I, I predict. I have not seen anything beyond the teaser announcements. We aren't going to get any details on how the game is going to be played until the 25th. However, there have been impassioned posts made on Board Game Geek, Facebook, Discord by Manny, Nate, and Gavin. If you're not familiar with those names, that's the three dudes whose names appear on every single product of Dice Throne because they're the people who are behind it. And they have talked about being lifelong Marvel fans and how five years ago before they started the Dice Throne juggernaut, and it is a, kind of a juggernaut. This game is massive already. And it's basically these three dudes. And they can't design multiple games at once. So for the people who feel like something is being taken away from the Dice Throne universe by the existence of this Marvel team up, you're not wrong. It, if the team is working on Marvel Dice Throne, they are not working on some other Dice Throne product. And for those people, if if that is a thing for you, I, sure, that's a fair criticism. You're right. We're not getting more Dice Throne Adventures content if the designers are working on Marvel Dice Throne. True. That's true of everything. Uh, there were definitely people that talked about how the creation of Dice Throne Adventures putting off more heroes putting off what everybody calls season three arguably marvel dice throne is season three so i i don't know like it's more heroes i i don't get that chris oh we're not getting season three well we are getting more heroes so i don't totally get that criticism but there is a bottleneck issue where you can only do so many things at a time that being said these dudes want to do this they have made impassioned posts in all these different places that I just listed about being lifelong Marvel fans, about being really excited to have made something that has so much traction and is so attractive to something a company like Marvel that they're able to take the amazing characters and inject them into Dice Throne. And I think telling somebody, like, let's take Manny, for example, saying, hey, I don't think you should draw that. I, I like your art. I like playing Dice Throne, but I don't think you should be drawing Captain America. I think that's unfair. Uh, if these guys want to do this and they're able to do this, I think it's really cool to be able to have this opportunity to see two things that I truly love married together in such an awesome way. So that's my initial reaction to this news. Until next time, go win some games.